Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're out in the field. As you can see here, got all the gear with me. Um, today's video is literally just a quick, brief video on signs of rabbits in warrens, um, the foliage that could be, cause a problem, um, and other signs of rabbits in the area, such as scrapings, um, semi-dug holes, etc. Um, so today's video, I'm going to be running through the basics of setting the purse nets, um, setting them properly so that it gives you a higher chance of catching the rabbits when they bolt into the holes. Um, I'll be showing you a couple of the ferrets that I brought along with you, just purposefully for this video. Um, I'll also be showing you um, just the nets, um, different colours and etc. of what needs to be um, what could aid you when out in the field. Um, so I'm going to start off with this net here. This is, what, this is one of the purse nets that we got here. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's red. And uh, when you're out in the field, or as you can see next to me, we're out and uh, it's quite a bit of foliage, stinging nettles, brambles. Um, you want to use or anything that is uh, bright. So example, we've got red nets here. So we've got the red net, we have yellow nets, we have yellow nets, and we also have a black net, and we also have a purple with a yellow and green drawstring. So the purpose of having brightly coloured nets is for you to be able to distinguish when you're out in the field or as you can see we're out here um, for this purpose there's a lot of brambles covering the holes so you don't want green colored nets or you don't want any dark colored nets covering the holes that you can see next to us you want a nice bright fluorescent net that will help you to distinguish where the net is when it comes to picking the nets up after working the warren with the ferrets so as you can see again we've got the bright colored nets red yellow and purple so we won't be using any nets today uh, this this video is simply just the purpose of uh, showing you how to lay them properly and what to look for when working a rabbit warrant so next thing i'm going to show you is one of the jills that we work she is currently in kit at the moment, but as you can see, she has her collar on. It's very important to have a ferret with a collar on when working them. Because if the rabbit blocks up in the stop end or kills a rabbit in the hole, you want to be able to locate the ferret and get them out as quickly as possible. So as you can see, she's got a belly on her, which means she's in kit. So she i'd say three to four weeks and she'll have some babies so she's known as a polecat polecat color okay so she's in kit so we won't be working her not at all and this is the hob that we used to get the jill in kit lovely hob so he was used to get the jill in kit and also another two jills that are at home um, so as said the locator on the ferret's neck uh, the collar sorry is connected to a locator box and that locator picks up the signals from the collar as you saw in the previous video um, so next up we'll move on and we'll um, show you how to lay some nets. Right now we're at the rabbit hole. So as you can see here, I've got a dark colored net, the black net, as shown in the, in the video. So I've opened the net up, and I open it up properly, like that. I'm gonna cover the hole, like such. Place the peg in. You wanna place it as far away from the hole, the entrance of the hole as you can. Set that back up. You want to make sure the whole hole is covered and you want to place the bottom ring into the 
into the ground. So the, when the rabbit bolts, it's got a higher chance of person in the net. So as you can see here, it's a dark net. There's a lot of foliage about, and you can't see the net properly. So it'd be very easy just to walk straight past this net when picking up, as I've done many times before. So as you can see, the, the peg is firmly in the ground. The rabbit will come flying out of the hole. It will purse, like such. Because of the bottom ring being in the floor, in the ground, it will purse better. And it will purse, and then it will be in the net on the floor. You run over, you dispatch it humanely. Next up, I'm going to show you how to lay a brighter net on a different hull. And that will be able to distinguish the difference between the two different coloured nets. Hi guys, welcome back. So you can see here, we have a bright yellow net with a red jawstring. So I open it up like I did with the other net. And you place it over the hole exactly the same. Over the hole. Get the peg. Push it in the ground as far away from the hole as you can get it. And you push the bottom ring into the ground. So that is now in. And you can see the big colour difference here from black to yellow. So I don't know whether you noticed before, but when laying this net, I noticed that there was a small pile of rabbit droppings. This is a good sign. This is all fresh and it's a good sign that the rabbits are using this warren on a daily basis. So this is an active warren, meaning there could be rabbits inside or they could be using it as a run through, but most likely using it as a warren to rest in during the day, simply because of all the foliage covering the warren itself. There's brambles, sticky weed, stinging nettles, trees, underground roots, all giving them sufficient shelter away from predators. Okay guys, so as you can see here, just quickly, is another example of a dark coloured net covering a hole covered in brambles, stinging nettles, sticky weed, any foliage that could get in the way. As you can see there, it's a dark coloured net, but there's a brighter peg helping us to distinguish where the net is and where it's been placed. This will allow us to pick up the net once we finish ferreting. Okay, so here is a prime example of the rabbits trying to make a warren out of this sandy substrate here. This is not good for the rabbits to make a burrow in as it just collapses on top of them and it's no good for making the warren. So as you can see, we have scrapings here. This is where they've attempted to make a warren or begin the start of a warren but haven't got very far and it's either collapsed or they've decided to make the warren elsewhere. So there's lots of examples of the scrapings uh, in the ground and uh, failures of not making a warren. So over here is another prime example of them beginning to make a warren to start to dig a warren. They've, they've got so far in but due to the sandy substrate it has collapsed further in and they have not been able to make the warren uh, deeper or longer. I'm now going to take you out into the into the open field and we're going to set the long net out and show you how to put it away afterwards. Here we are guys in the field now I'm going to show you a quick example of how I lay my quick set long net. So we'll start off with the end pole, place it into the ground, go along, Next pole. In. Keep going on along. Get to the next one. 
next pub. So as you can see here, it hasn't bagged properly. Just want to go along, just adjust it, make sure all the lines are tight. And we'll adjust the bagging in the net. Okay? So as you can see, it's loosened there. Right? We'll come along to the next one. Adjust the bag. Such. As you can see there, we have a 25 yard quick set long net up and ready to be used. As you saw then, I set out the 25 yard long net. The reason for using a long net is for ideas such as you can't get to the burrow within a hedgerow for example or places that are inaccessible to lay purse nets um, the design of the long net um, is near enough the same principle of using the purse net the rabbit will run out of the warren into the purse net giving us an adequate amount of time to come and dispatch the rabbit humanely another good reason for using the long net is that you can use dogs the dogs will then uh, are quicker than us as humans um, and will get to the long net quicker than us and will hold the rabbit whilst we run over and then dispatch it humanely. 